Welcome Quest fans, Tony here. Today I'll take you through how to play classic light gun games on your Quest using just your Oculus Touch controllers as light guns and no PC connection required. You could also use both Oculus controllers to dual wield. Now if you do like this video, subscribing to this channel really helps me make more content like this so please do subscribe and hit that notification bell. And hell, you can even use your hands to pinch enemies to death uh, in this way I'm not sure why you want to do that but if you do then you can so I'll show you how to do all this and more in the next few minutes so we start off by downloading and installing something called BlueStacks now BlueStacks lets you install Android applications on your PC it will get you to sign into Google Play um, and then we search for EPSXE, which is an PS1 emulator. Now it's only gonna cost you a few dollars to purchase this one, so we go ahead and purchase it. We also need to download something called CX File Explorer. So we go back to our home screen, we go into CX File Explorer. Now I understand there are ways to get this um, emulator for free, uh, but it's a great emulator, it only costs a few dollars and it's well worth purchasing to support the developers in the work they're doing. So I'm doing it this way. We go into apps, then we select our EPSXE emulator and click on share. And I'm gonna save it to the downloads folder. So I click on that folder, then I go down and click save. Then go back to the home screen, click on more apps, click on the media manager. Then I find my downloads folder again. I click on export to Windows down the bottom. I click on my file and then export to Windows. Now there might be easier ways to get this APK file, but this is a pretty simple and safe way. You also might wanna rename it from base APK to EPSXE APK. Then I connect my headset to the PC and I just use SideQuest to install the APK file. Now once you've done that, you put on your headset, go into library, go into unknown sources, find EPSXE. When you first open it up, it will automatically install some things. Just follow the prompts and it will set itself up. It's very easy to use. Then get out of that, connect your Quest to the PC, go into internal storage, go into EPSXE folder, go into the ROMs folder and then just paste any ROMs you have in there. Now at the end of this video, I'll show you how to put together a PlayStation ROM. It can be a bit tricky, it's not like a NES ROM where it's just one file. There can be a couple of files involved and a few different processes, but I will show you at the end of this video. So once you've got your ROMs in there, start up EPSE again, you'll see that it hasn't loaded all of my games. So I just go to the uh, refresh symbol there and I just search for all and it just searches my entire hard drive on the Quest. Now you don't actually have to put the ROMs in the ROM folder, it's just good practice to do it. You can actually put them anywhere in your Quest and it will pick them up, which is a great thing, including all the box art and everything. Now I'm going to preferences, I'm going to input preferences and what I want to do next is make sure I have a light gun selected. Now we have a choice of two light guns, the Namco and the Justifier gun. So I'm going to set up the classic Time Crisis first, so I'm going to select the Namco gun and then what I'm going to do is go into the run game, I select Time Crisis of course. So you see these two virtual buttons that come up uh, along the side, these are going to be important because one of these is going to be the button for our pedal so we can take cover. Now we're going to need to use two Oculus controllers to play this game. And when you get to the menu screen, you go into options. So this is very important, otherwise you can't play it. You go into button configuration, then you go and select reload press. So reload press, and what that will do is when you press a button, you will take cover rather than the other way around. So you can see me in the top left playing Time Crisis, and you can see on my left hand, I'm pointing the controller at that A button. And that A button, when I press the trigger, that uh, brings me back into cover. Now you might think it might be a bit annoying to have to do that, but actually I found it fine. I didn't find any problems at all. Um, I rested my left hand on my lap and the button's quite big. So even if my left hand moved, it wouldn't stray from that button. Um, and so really it became quite natural after just a, a short while. So here I am playing Lethal Enforcers. To reload my gun, all I do is point to that black strip on the side of the screen and I press the trigger and it reloads just fine. So here I am playing the gun game in Die Hard Trilogy. 
Now the reload system works exactly like lethal enforcers. I just point off to the side and press trigger on that black strip. And I can press the black back button here. And what that does is it fires my special weapons, my grenades and rockets. And with all the games you've seen, the emulation is great. There's no real slowdown. All the sounds are there as they should be. And the gun works perfectly fine. Now, of course, you can just connect a Bluetooth controller and play any PlayStation game, not just light gun games. Um, but this video is about the light gun game specifically. But that's something you can do. If you check out my Retro Arc tutorial, the link is in the description. I go through how you can connect a Bluetooth controller to your headset. Now, here is Crypt Crawler. It's quite a good shooting game. Now, if you do find your gun is a bit off, sometimes it can be just because you need to adjust the gun. So here I'm going into gun adjustment to calibrate my aiming now for some weird reason to calibrate this gun I had to shoot a bit off center to actually make the game aim accurately I don't know why but now it works and here I am using hand tracking like a gun I'm just pinching my fingers together like you would select the menu item and it's actually firing for me now why you want to play like that I don't know but you can and this is quite cool here's me playing area 51 and using both controllers in a kind of dual wield fashion now they still share the same clip but you can fire it will essentially are two light guns so here i am playing gunfighter legend of jesse james this like time crisis has a cover system uh, so you need to turn reverse duck on and then have your other controller pointed at the b button this is a good game too uh, highly recommend downloading it and giving it a go and most games work fine but from the ones i tested i couldn't get star wars rebel assault 2 to work project horned owl or maximum force um, the gun just wouldn't appear on screen i'm not sure if there is some way to get them working but what i'll do is i'll leave a list in the description below of all the games i tested and found to be working and those that i found i couldn't get working so installing playstation roms so most roms if you're lucky come with a queue and a bin file now all you do is unzip them and place those queue and bin file in their own named folder you can name it whatever you like and then transfer it to the rom section of your quest now some folders like this judge dread is a bin.ecm file you can also see we don't have a q file which we also need so first extract it then i use something called ecm tool so with my judge dread bin.ecm folder i drag it to uncecm.exe and that unpacks the file and so now i have my bin file now i need a q file too so i drag it and drop it here in this website i copy the text that comes up i paste it in a notepad then i save that notepad as the same title as my bin file and now i have my q file so i have the two files i need and i'll quickly show you another method of getting the q file i download this file here link in the description below which gives me all the q files for all of the playstation roms now some games will come with all of these eight files now eight files are basically the soundtrack for the game you can play it without them but you'll have no music um, so I copy all these eight files and I transfer them to monkeys audio then I click on decompress and that changes all these dot eight files into dot wav files then I go to this website here I download uh, wav to bin and then I extract that file and I drag all my dot wav files to the uh, wav to bin bat um, file there and what it does is it transfers them all into bin files so now all i need is my .q file to run all of these bin files so i go into that folder i showed you the q's and sbi's folder which contains q files for all of the playstation roms i've downloaded it i unzip it and it looks something like this so i find obviously die hard trilogy and that will have a q file that contains all of the text to run all of those bin files that i now have for die hard trilogy so let's just double check the Q file just to make sure and it looks fine. So now I've got my Q file, now I've got all my bin files. I'll put it all in one folder and again put it on my ROMs folder in the quest. And now I can play Die Hard with the soundtrack. Anyway, that's it from me. Remember to subscribe if you want more content like this and I'll catch you next time.